very random, but I just wanted to share this on the vlog. I just have an appreciation for honey. He's talking to you, sir. No, oh, okay. Yeah, I just, I know nobody gives a f It's cool how like bees make it. Yeah. And then like, it's like this golden syrup. Oh yeah, th and they're here by the way. Introduce yourself. That's disgusting. <laughs> hey, y'all already know, it's Trap Bunny. Y'all been asking for me to come back on the channel and here I am with Hey Six. Honey is amazing. Ooh. Ew. Have you watched Lazy Town before? <laughs> Not too <laughs> much. Oh, you can do like a Lazy Town song, it would be hard though. But that's no, a good, that's yeah, good. Listen. And the music video gotta look like the show, like that would be hard. She does look just like it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta guy. be in the video though. Sporticus. Well, Rob will be the guy that passed. Well, I'm more of a Sporticus <laughs> type of guy. Damn, how you doing? Come on. You resemble more of him though, I feel like. I could definitely see Rob doing the Sporticus guy. I was just saying, just because Rob's such a prolific actor, he could have played the guy in that past. What's yeah. his name? I shouldn't call him by his name. Yeah. Robbie Rotten. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There was two big flies in my room, and I killed them with a flame lighter. Like a torch? A torch. I got a torch. Look at this. Where would that fuck fly go? All right, he's right here. Watch. Well, it's gonna be quicker than that. It's too slow. Where'd it go? Man, we lost it. Huh. I just wanted to tell everyone that I did that. When it comes to insects, I'm really evil. Yeah, I hate bugs. Like, I'm, I'm just, out of my way to stomp a bug out. Yeah. yeah. Okay, this is. I like to torture them. I've done okay, that before, so though. I've like taken like uh, like my tweezers and like and <laughs> then like took off each leg individually. I used to attach a string to like the beetles, you know. You, you have it like as a pet for the day. What? I didn't have a lot of toys as a kid. Wait, you would really tie a bee to a string? No, a beetle. You know those black beetles, those green beetles. So uh -huh. it was like you get a string and you just catch it or whatever. You tie walk it to it? the thing. What'd you do? No, that? you just let it fly away. You just hold it like this. Wait, they can fly while they're. Oh well, yeah. Maybe that's just me though. Where it comes full circle with the honey, I'll put honey on like a spider. And then I'll torch it. Okay, I don't know about that. Okay, yeah, sorry, I'm not sharing too much. <laughs> but also, the honey, it's like they're stuck, like they can't even move. And it's like a, uh, wait, I'm drowning, and you get torched. So, what's up with you? Our vlog has never seen your SO. What's y'all story? Okay, well, I was stalking on social media um, because I was trying to catch this girl cheating. Like, one of my friends was cheating on my other friend, and I knew it. So I was stalking the, like, social media to see all the people she followed and stuff. So then I found this page, and then I seen her on that page, and I was like, dang, well, to be honest, stalking break, I'm hitting her up. Mm. So then I hit her up really loud in the DMs, like capital letters and all. I was like, hey, please. Please, please. please. Hey, please. She was like, hey, and I was like, I like you. And she was like, you don't know me. I was like, not yet. Interesting. Forgive me for my ignorance here. So what's the deal with your sexuality? Are you, would you consider yourself a lesbian? Are you guys a lesbian couple? Yeah. yeah. It's two girls. So we're a homosexual couple. So then that becomes a lesbian couple. And this is my this is my favorite topic, by the way. Rob knows this about me. Um, oh, yeah. There's different types of lesbians. There's like so many different types. So my question to y'all is, do y'all have preferences? And how did this come to be? Like, oh, are you specifically into colored hair? I don't know. Okay, like, well, me personally, I like, for relationships, I like more masculine presenting women. But for like, just to fuck. Like, I don't care, I like all women. I like girly girls, I like nails and all that stuff. So, you know, mm. no brainer. When did you guys realize, oh, I'm a lesbian? I feel like I knew when I was like 12, but I didn't really come to terms with it until I was 17. But like, I remember mm. I was in sixth grade and I was like, dang, my friend is so cute. Mm. <laughs> it was like lunch and I ran and I kissed her on the cheek. She's like, did you just kiss me on the cheek? And I was like, no, I was trying to tell you a secret, obviously. <laughs> Just... No, literally. I need to I need to use that one. My mom used to have this friend and she had this daughter and I could call her up right now and ask to be honest. Should I? She had this friend and she had this daughter and we were like grinding on each other in like a playhouse. Um and Hey, you're on speaker. Um, how old was I when me and Uriah were playing house? Little. Like how little though, like how old? She went to preschool with you. So preschool age. All right, I love you. Why'd you ask that? I'm trying to figure out when I liked girls. Oh, I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my okay. mom, she has a husband and a wife, but 
Yeah, when I I have two more questions. Did you ever have to like experiment with a guy to know that you didn't want to be with a guy, or did you know? Okay, so I had my first kiss with a boy when I was ten. But to be honest, it was because I was jealous. I was at a sleepover and everybody was having their first kiss, and I was like, okay, what the fuck? So I went to sleep and I texted the boy across the street. I'm like, hey, you gonna kiss me on a trampoline in the morning? And then he kissed me on a trampoline in the morning. And he was like, that was great, and I was like, wow, it wasn't. And my first time experimenting with a guy, cause. I didn't experiment with a guy until like maybe we were in high school or middle school. I don't really remember, but I remember like I was going to school with this girl. Her name is Becca. She was fast. Like she would sneak out the house. And like one day I never snuck out my house before. So we snuck out the house together and she sent me on a two-man mission. Mind you, I didn't know we was going on a two-man mission. I thought we was just hanging out. And so then like we got in the car with these guys. They were like older than us. I literally was getting no play like <laughs> my entire school year, but go on. So it was these two Persian guys and then like she was like, okay, I'm about to go like I'm about to go take a walk So I'm like, okay, so we're sitting in the car. He jumps in the back seat. I'm like, okay, like what are you doing? And then he's like, let's go and then we I just like you know, like in 69, and then like he ejaculated in my mouth and I spit it back on his shirt because it was literally the most disgusting thing I've ever tasted in my entire life. And I was like, never again am I ever letting get in my mouth. That is nasty. Mm, yeah. You know, I, I, I relate in the not wanting to have that <laughs> happen to me. I was just thinking it's tricky, let's say before you guys were dating. Isn't it a bit frustrating like, all right, you're into girls, but not all girls are into girls. So it's like you have a crush on someone that it's not even fathomable for them to be with you. It doesn't that Listen, hurt? bro, noodles are straight until they get wet. And that is my motto for the rest of life. This girl led me on for like six months and then she was like, yeah, I can never date you. And I was like, okay. And then not she gave me like, well, how do you feel? I feel straight. I feel very straight. <laughs> no, I'm like, <laughs> Like, if you ever find like a girl that was gay, but she was like super fine, super feminine, exactly your type, like how would you feel? I don't know. I, that's just not the circles I tend to hang out in. So I don't speak to a lot of gay people. So that's why I, when I get the opportunity, I'm like, I gotta get all my answers. We said this many times before where it's like, oh, if you're bisexual or whatever, you gotta be careful if you have a bisexual partner, like who are you hanging out with? Oh, just my girlfriends. <laughs> uh, who's gonna be there? This guy, this girl. It's like anybody's like fair game type shit. My thing is like, do you feel like your bitch is gonna cheat? Shit, I always feel like they're gonna cheat. Like, regardless, you could have a girl that's straight too that will cheat more. I don't know, bro. I feel like it's worse if you get cheated on with the opposite sex because it's just like, whoa, well, yeah. you, you clearly ain't want me. PB brought up a great point. <laughs> Say what you just said again. Okay, if somebody was breaking into my house, like, you really never know who you're fucking with and like where the mental capacity is at with that person. So, like, imagine like you break into my house and then, like, if I hear somebody break into my house, me, my first go to, slip my wrist. I know that sounds crazy. Is but hear me out. Just a quick like, just enough blood to be like crazy. And then, you know, I'll already have 911 on the phone. Like I just slit my wrist, somebody broke in the house. Boom, just imagine me coming out like with my wrist, like running at you while you're breaking into my house. Like to be honest, I guarantee you, you're gonna leave. Can we see how you'd run? How would you do it? So Rob's gonna be the guy that broke in. Yeah. All right, here's your honey. You're coming at BB with some uh, honey in your hand. I'm breaking in. Give me all your honey. Yeah! <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm putting everything back. Who thinks of that? Like, I thought about this. All right, someone ro is trying to rob you. If you're a guy, you whip your d out. If I have my thing slicking and laying and slapping, but like, don't, don't touch me with that. Ew. But then the robber's gay. Imagine you rob me on my period too, and I just fucking have a white nightgown on, and it's just blood everywhere, and I'm just like. Oh wait. <laughs> You need to audition for Halloween Horror Nights, you know, the <laughs> Universal Studios. I, I was thinking when I'm walking it late at night or if it's a sketchy area, sometimes I try to make myself look sketchier. Oh, I'm a little spooked out right now, but it, what if I spook out the guy that's coming up on me? So if it's a random guy in public and I'm like, I don't know what his attentions are, let me try to spook him. So that he's like, oh, I don't want any trouble with that guy. I try to do the hood up and then, I don't know, just looking like disgruntled, like this look on my face, walking kind of a bit off, walking like I gotta go do something. So if someone's like, Give me your money and you're like, <laughs>
When we lived at a, an older place over here, there was a time where there was a psycho homeless guy, druggy, whatever, who kept bothering me when I would leave the complex. Hey, you got money, whatever. And I was, and I said to him, I was like, you keep asking me for money. Like, what's your deal? I just needed some, whatever. And I was like, do you ask other people around here for money? He's like, oh, I mean, just kind okay, of whatever. I said, I'd be careful. Like the guy that lives at the end of the street, like, I don't know. I wouldn't mess with like this area here. Cause that dude's crazy. And then I never saw him again. Um, <laughs> ain't nobody live here that's scary. Yeah. But yeah, you just got to out freak the freaks. Can you give us any significant updates in your life? I'm no longer signed. My choice of y'all, to be honest, uh, is that glowing? I'm not with the Columbia anymore, personal reasons. I just wanted to be a little different, but I am right now working with my music a lot more than I was in the past few years. Cause as you guys know, like music did slow down. I moved to Florida, but I'm moving back because nothing is like LA for real. And I'm signed with a new company. I just did Miami Swim Week and New York Fashion Week. So I've been doing my thug thistle. So do you do like OnlyFans or what is that? No, I still do OnlyFans. What type of stuff do you do on there? Y'all be doing stuff or? So anyway, the next topic, um, um, do you know anything about the music industry that people would like to know? Like, is it like, oh my God, there's like underworld elites running it and you have to say certain stuff or otherwise they'll take your family. I just feel like you were in the music industry. I am in the music industry. So what is the secret or are there no secrets? No secrets. Yeah, that sounds a little sketchy. My hypotheses are probably right. I mean, what's your future with your music? Um, I have all different genres now. I've been working like more. I've had like um, a little more vocal training, so I'm gonna be doing some poppy stuff, some singing stuff, some rock stuff, hyper pop. Like I've definitely made sure that I've become a master in all genres just because, you know, music be having, it's like ages. You know, like sometimes it's this type of music, sometimes it's this type of music, and I don't ever want to be stuck because I only know how to make one type of music. I will so you've been like so successful at making like viral songs. It seems like everything you've done has been like really big. How is that? Are you just a genius? Yeah. Thanks. Listen, no, it's <laughs> also just because like I studied TikTok. Like specifically, I go viral on TikTok because like mm -hmm. back when I used to be unsober, I took acid and then I spent my whole entire acid trip like studying TikTok, like the hashtags, the algorithm, the filters, everything that was going viral. Like I studied it. I want you to tell the airplane story. So basically I was on my way from Florida to Aspen, Colorado in last January. And then basically like I get to the airport and then it's a stop because they have to switch planes into a smaller plane. So we get into the smaller plane. I'm like, I had to stop at Dallas and I had to get onto a smaller plane. Like it was not big. Like, I don't know. I've never been in a plane that small except for when I go skydiving. So anyways, we get in the plane. I go to sleep because I don't really like planes. So I'm trying to sleep through the whole thing. And then I get woken up by literally the plane is like shaking like really hard. Like, shh, shh, shh. like the things are opening and like the flight attendant is walking down the aisle. Like there's a flight attendant crying in the back. I wake up to people crying. So immediately I start crying too. The flight attendant's crying? Yeah, in the back. Oh, hell no. So like immediately I start crying too because it, everybody else is crying. There's bitches around me hyperventilating. Like, okay, I guess we're all gonna cry because everybody's crying, I'm gonna cry too. But I just remember the guy next to me asked the flight attendant what's going on. Like she's, she was like, I don't know, I can't tell you, but like text your families, call your families. I'm like, I'm I don't know, but call your yeah, family. Right. So I'm texting my dad, my sister, I'm texting my girlfriend, I'm texting my best friend. I'm like, just so you know, like, I don't know what's going on. Like I literally had no information to tell them what I'm supposed to text them. So then finally, like, we land in the middle of the tarmac in, I think it's called Grand Junction. But anyways, it's two hours past Aspen, you know? So I guess the weather conditions weren't safe to land in Aspen. And my theory is that they ran out of fuel and that's why the plane was like shaky and stuff. And then we landed and we landed in the middle of the tarmac. The reason why I feel like my theory is supported is because they couldn't pull us forward to the terminal, you know? Like they landed us in the middle of the tarmac. So my guess is that they didn't even have fuel to like bring us there. Like we barely had enough fuel. So then we all get off the plane and like we literally have to walk to the airport from the tarmac. Like we had to walk out of the plane with like these little like step stairs that they brought out and then get to the place and literally like get inside the airport. Literally I freaking sat down and started hyperventilating. I remember I was so mad because this bitch 
had a dog and I asked if I could pet her dog. You know, like I get it because I have a dog and I don't really like everybody petting my dog. I'm crying, my face is red. I'm like, can I pet your dog? She's like, no. Sorry. I ain't going to Colorado after that. I already have a serious fear of flying. I do it frequently and I've been doing it all my life, but no, and I had a flight that it, the turbulence was just different. And I was like, bro, I can't do this. Since that day, I can't even fall asleep on any plane, any flight. Can some like aviation experts please tell me wh why that might've happened? So you went to a different airport. Yeah, but it was two hours away, like past the airport that I was supposed to be at. So I could only assume that the weather was bad in the area and you couldn't land there. And then you had to go two hours somewhere else. And it was like, then you were low on fuel, mm -hmm. but you're alive. Oh my God, imagine if you just weren't here anymore. No, to be honest, I think you guys would be so sad. Yeah, I mean, it's, I've already lost people in my life and it's like, they just not coming back. Yeah, I lost a lot of friends like that I used to do like drugs with. And to be honest, that was kind of like an eye opener too for me to stop. It's the concept of death that makes us cherish life more. If we're just here forever, then it's like, bruh. Now we're getting into some deep stuff. Just the concept of religion and Jesus or whatever gods people choose. Well, me and her actually just had this conversation. And here's my take on it. Everybody believes in God. Every single person on this planet believes in God. But what I consider God may not be what you consider God. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. there are so many different beliefs, different religions. But essentially, everybody believes in a higher power. Do you believe in, like, the idea of, like, there's a different timeline, like, opened every time you make a decision? Like, for example... Boom. Like, let's say, like, I decided to not come over today, but not, and I was like, oh, well, to be honest, I can't come anymore today. Like, do you believe that in another dimension, I did come over today, or in another dimension, I didn't, but just based on that decision? I do believe in that, because the concept that our universe is infinite, it's infinite, so now there's infinite Earths. There's infinite Earths where we don't exist, but then there's also an infinite number where we do exist, and on each of those existences, we all do different things. Yeah, there's, there's a universe where I went to college, and I'm a lawyer. Mm -hmm. There's one where Noah and Rob are both gay. I don't know about that. <laughs> That is also like what I compare to like when I do be feeling chest pains or when I do like feel like some random pain in my body or a sharp pain in my body that like I've done nothing to cause. I feel like that's another dimension self of me like getting hurt in that area. I had th this like thing in my like butt region and I was getting a lot of stabbing pains in like my like anus region. So is it possible that I'm gay in the other scenario and I'm getting it? Shit, maybe. But you know, there was a medical reason why it was happening. Okay. I'm sure you've had spiritual things that happened to you where that you couldn't really explain. Mm -hmm. Like I had that actually recently just on my trip. My grandmother passed away. I don't know how many years ago, maybe eight years ago or something. Eight, nine, 10, 13. I don't know. When I was a kid, I would play outside her house in, in Northern Ireland and we would play with snails and we would just put them on her window and grab them from the plants and put them on there. And then we went to visit her grave recently and then on her grave there was a snail and there was no snails the whole place in the whole graveyard but then there's one on there and I was like maybe yeah there's just it just happened that there was a snail there but at the same time maybe not a lot of people believe like oh pendulum is fake pendulum is like not real so we used the pendulum in this car was like we saw this car like three times in the day already and the neighborhood is big you know so like how we see the same car three times so then we see it out of light and I'm like okay well let's follow it because if we see it for three times today we might as we might be needing something from that car like we were here and they were at the turning signal like perpendicular mm. so they turned and we had to go but we had to pass two lights and come back around so at this point there's no way we could have seen the car so i was like dang but then i pulled out the pendulum and i said lead us to the car that right, sounds crazy bro, the car is right here for real the pendulum, listen, I never believed in it, but the pendulum brought us here. We went down an alleyway. We had to wait through two red lights to even get to turn around to be on the same side of the road that he was on. And then we took another light and then we went down an alley and then we found the car. And it's a, it just happened to be the same green BMW with a green roof rack. Yeah, and so we held up the pendulum like this and the pendulum was literally, while we were driving, staying still and then moving to the way that we needed to turn. So we followed the pendulum all the way to the car. I could just see that. Like, we're lost in the parking lot. Like, where we park? And then... <laughs> Pee -pee. Lead us to the thing. Speaking of things that are out of this world, we dropped a song. We did. How much is your feature price? It changes. It changes. I got one for free, so it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. If you guys want to go listen to that, I'll just put a link at the top of the description. And I will say, seeing you record your verse and stuff and just seeing you record other songs, like you are a true professional. I don't think people understand that. They might see you and it's like, oh, silly pee pee girl. She's just crazy and wild. But like, you're actually a real professional artist. Like I see other rappers and people that don't take a 
is very serious, but you're really talented. Thank you. And what if I wanted to shoot a music video for it? I'm down. You just have to let me know when, because I don't know when exactly I'm moving back out here, but Ooh. that poster is crooked. It has been crooked, honestly. Like. It's, it's a not little straight, better, but it's, but it's not straight. Should I go more this way? Yeah. yeah. God bless America. And if you guys want to hear the song, link in the description. So. <laughs> <laughs>